flooding that anyone can remember in Hereford. Here, Volunteer Colin Taylor is going house to house. Yeah, so how many people have you rescued now? Oh, well, they put the question. Must be two dozen. This is my parents' house. Careful, there's a step, step there. there is that? The water rose so uh, fast here, well, many people are stranded. Uh, we didn't quite think it would be in as high as it is. This is the sitting room. In this home, the family have tried to salvage what they can, but it is hopeless. Well, most of we lifted all the furniture up onto the beer crate. We have, um, he has a big cider crates, which he lifts stuff onto. Uh, but we lifted it up, but it wasn't enough. Through upstairs windows, those who've decided to stay look down helpless on roads that have turned to rivers. Oh, it's cold. Karen Smith's driveway is under feet of water. She tells me she couldn't leave, even if she wanted to. How are you doing? Are you going to stay put? We're going to stay put, yes. I've, I've not long had a hip replacement, so I don't think I could get out anyway. So much here has been destroyed, and it's the second time these homes have been flooded in the last four months. This is one of the worst affected neighbourhoods. People's possessions, rubbish floating down the street. You can see how deep it is. I'm using a pole just to make sure it doesn't suddenly drop off. But of course, what's happening here are searching policy questions for the government about how you protect places like this at the time of a climate emergency and more unpredictable weather systems. In other parts of the country, the cleanup has already begun. This supermarket in Worcester has been devastated. Obviously, we had Kira last weekend. You know, it got close again. And luckily, it didn't happen, but here we are again. And it was Kira's super soaking that laid the sodden ground for the power of Dennis. With two monster storms so close together, many flood-prone areas didn't stand a chance. The flood warden came round and warned us that it was going to come quite high and then the uh, fire brigade came and said you really should leave because it's going to be higher than it's been before. But uh, we thought, well, last time we left, but it went down the next morning, so we thought we'll be OK. Yeah, it was scary and all of it, like, we got all the drawers and that up that we could, but there's still things that you're thinking, oh, God, have we got this, passports and all of this, but there's nothing you can do. Like, I had the waders, but Mum and Grandma didn't have anything to go downstairs. It's freezing, so it's not even worth it. What's gone is gone and can be replaced, can it? In York, there are fears the River Ouse, which is swollen and angry, may rise even further. Flood defences have been set up around the city. For people living on nature's front line, it is an anxious wait. The Environment Agency still has hundreds of flood warnings in place. Much of the country is a patchwork of lakes. Levels are not going to change hugely over the next 24, 48 hours, and that, that presents another problem in itself, where we have got flooded homes and businesses and flooded roads. The situation isn't going to improve very quickly. Back in Hereford, and the rescue operations are continuing. More rain and gale force winds are predicted. And that means more wet and misery. Alex Rossi, Sky News.